Puss in Boots, Puss in Boots, Fairy Tales and Bedtime Stories for Kids. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a poor miller with his three sons. When the miller died, he left his eldest son the mill, his middle son the donkey, and to his youngest son, who had always felt a bit lost in the shadows of his brothers, he left his cat. The youngest son was devastated. What can I do with a cat, he thought. You can't even eat it. As he sat there, feeling sorry for himself, something very unexpected happened. The cat looked up at him and spoke. You're awfully wrong about me, sir. I can be much more valuable to you than you think. The young man was stunned. You can talk, he stammered, eyes wide with disbelief. Yes, indeed, replied the cat with a wink. If you bring me an empty sack, a hat, and a pair of boots, I will show you how. The young man, still taken aback, thought to himself, if this cat can talk, he might know something worthwhile. With a glimmer of hope, he decided to trust the clever feline. He quickly gathered the items the cat requested. Once he had everything, the cat donned the hat and boots, striking a pose in front of the mirror. Look at me. Now, off to the woods, he declared, a sparkle of ambition in his eyes. In the woods, the cat placed the sack on the ground and arranged some fresh lettuce and a carrot inside. Not long after, a curious bunny hopped by, drawn in by the delicious smell. With a swift motion, the cat caught the rabbit in the sack and tied it shut. Instead of taking the bunny back to his owner, he decided to take it straight to the castle. When he arrived at the castle gates, the guards were astonished to see a talking cat wearing a hat and boots. They quickly took him to the king. Mighty lord, the cat proclaimed, I present to you the gift of the prince of Karaba. My master has caught this fine bunny for you. The king was impressed by this unique gift and welcomed the cat. Day by day, Puss in Boots continued to bring more animals he caught, each time claiming they were gifts from the noble prince of Karaba. The entire kingdom began to whisper about the prince's generosity and wealth, and soon, the king's curiosity grew. One day, the king asked Puss in Boots, Is your master young and handsome? Oh, yes, your majesty. Very handsome indeed, replied the cat, puffing out his chest. He would be honored to welcome you in his castle. The queen was delighted. Perhaps we have found the perfect husband for our daughter, she exclaimed. A few days later, Puss in Boots learned that the king and queen would be out on the town with their daughter. This was the day he had been waiting for. Sir, we must go to the riverbank right away, he urged his master. The young man, confused but trusting his clever cat, followed him. Why do we need to swim? I don't know how, the boy protested. It's better that you don't. Take off your clothes and jump in, commanded Puss in Boots, excitement bubbling in his voice. The young man hesitated but complied. As he swam in the cool river, Puss hid his clothes behind a bush. Just then, the king's carriage approached the river. Puss sprang into action. Help! Help! My master, the prince of Karaba, is drowning, he yelled, his voice filled with urgency. The king quickly ordered his guards to rescue the young man. When they pulled him from the water, Puss explained how thieves had stolen his clothes. The king, feeling sympathetic, commanded his guards to bring some of the finest clothing for the young man. When the young man emerged dressed in royal garments, he looked every bit the prince. As he walked towards the king's carriage, the princess and queen gazed at him in awe. The young man bowed before the king. I can't thank you enough. My master, the Prince of Karaba, would be honored to host you in his castle. Puss in Boots raced back, exhilarated. The princess was enchanted by the handsome prince, and the king's carriage rolled onward. As they passed through the land, Puss warned the farmers along the way. When the king asks, you will say this land belongs to the Prince of Karaba. The farmers nodded, terrified of what would happen if they didn't comply. Puss arrived at the giant's castle, knocking on the door. The giant opened it, shocked to see a cat in boots and a hat. Who are you? He boomed. Good day, your highness. I am the king's loyal servant, Puss replied smoothly. The king has told me much about your amazing magical abilities. Magic? Huh. What can I do? The giant laughed, puffing out his chest. Can you transform into a huge lion? Puss asked innocently. Of course, 
The giant boomed, transforming before Puss's eyes. Puss feigned terror and jumped back. Okay, okay, that's enough, he squeaked. The giant transformed back, looking pleased. But can you become a tiny mouse? Puss pushed on. The giant laughed heartily. That's easy. As the giant turned into a mouse, Puss pounced. With a swift snap, he caught the mouse in his paws, ending the giant's reign. Just as the king's carriage arrived at the castle, Puss rushed to greet them. Your Highness, the Prince of Carabas Castle is at your service. Please, come in. The king, queen, and princess marveled at the castle as they walked through its grand halls. The queen turned to the young man. My dear prince, are you married? No, your highness, he replied. If you would allow me, I would love to wed your beautiful daughter and make her very happy. A grand feast was prepared at the castle, and soon after, the prince and the princess were engaged. Do you see, sir? I told you how valuable I could be. Puss in Boots exclaimed, his eyes gleaming with pride. From that day forward, Puss remained the prince's loyal servant, and together they lived a life full of riches, joy, and countless adventures. And so, the clever cat and the young prince found happiness, proving that sometimes, the most unexpected companions can lead to the greatest journeys.